So this is just a quick setup of the Raspberry Pi Model B, or Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. That's the 4 gig uh, RAM unit. I have the aluminum heatsink case combo. So it's a case and a heatsink all in one for passive cooling. I have a slight overclock of the CPU to 2000 megahertz, 2 gigahertz and a overclock to the GPU, but just the V3D frequency up to 750 megahertz for the uh, 3D processing core of the GPU. So the N64 emulation will run at full speed for pretty much every game. And it's very straightforward. You just screw the uh, Raspberry Pi passive cooling case on with these two screws there, two screws there with the provided Allen key. And then you're pretty much good to go. You got four USB ports, two 3.0, two 2.0, Ethernet, uh, even though there's built-in Wi-Fi and built-in Bluetooth. It's a solid device. This whole kit and caboodle here, and not shown in this video, are the power adapter. I just use a USB-C cable connected directly into my uh, video card on my PC. So my video card on my PC, the USB-C port, it's meant for VR. So it's constantly outputting 28 watts of power, which is way more than this needs. So it's definitely enough, but you can also just use the power brick that you can buy with it. And you also need a micro HDMI to HDMI cable. So this is the USB-C for power. And these two are your HDMI out mini, the one closest to your USB-C. So this one right here, that is uh, within the Raspberry Pi architecture is the HDMI 0 and HDMI 1. Um, most times you're just going to want to use the one that's closest to the USB-C just to avoid any potential display issues on your TV. This one just will work out of the box. This one you may have to modify the config.txt file and have it manually choose HDMI 1. But yeah, just use that one and you're good to go. If you're connecting it to a 4K display like this on my 4K OLED, you will have to modify either the config file to output only in 1080p, which would be one of the command lines that you have to add in there. I think it's HDMI underscore mode equals 16. 16 is 1080p at 60 hertz frequency. Or if you're running the LACA OS, you can just simply change the width to 1920 and the height to 1080 and then you don't need to modify anything on the text file. I find the only time you want to modify that config text file is when you are wanting to do some minor overclocks and things like that. So I'm just going to go hook it up right quick and yeah, go from there. So you want to plug in the, I always do the HDMI first and then Use a USB keyboard, I find is the best way to go at the beginning. That way you can set everything up as you need. And once you're done with the keyboard, you can just connect your controllers uh, either with USB or Bluetooth if you want. Doesn't really matter in the end, right? It's your device, you do what you want. And then as soon as you plug in the USB-C, you get power. And we should see right there, yeah, this is the LACA OS just booting up now. And <clears throat> once there's power to the keyboard, you'll also see that the keyboard will then light up. That lets you know that you're going to be good to go momentarily here. So this is on LACA 3.4. This one just got updated on September 5th, 2021. This version of the LACA OS has the updated uh, MuPen 64 core for emulation for the Nintendo 64. And now everything, if you do that overclock for the V3D frequency of 750 megahertz, you're pretty much going to be running everything at full speed for Nintendo 64. As long as you do those minor overclocks, and as long as you make sure when you go into settings that your full screen mode right here is set to 1920 and 1080. Now to change these numbers, you can't just type it in. You have to either use left and right or you can just go in and then hold left and right to go up quickly, right? That's the easiest way I find anyway. So 1920 by 1080. 
and then backspace just to go back a screen. Output, this is where you can choose the mode you want. You want Vulkan. Vulkan's going to give you the best performance, at least with N64 that I've found personally, or anecdotally, I should say. And then the rest of this, definitely leaf threaded video on. The Raspberry Pi is not powerful enough to have anything uh, running on just a single core, so you definitely want threaded video on because the Raspberry Pi is tiny. It's a, it's a quad core CPU, and it needs to use all those cores in order to keep the speed up. You're gonna have uh, minor latency issues. This is not like running this on a high-powered desktop PC. So uh, think of it just as you wanna get the emulation up and running. You want it to run at full speed, and then you're good. Your latency, um, I had some minor issues, but really only in demanding games like uh, Conker's Bad Fur Day and things like that at 64 uh, milliseconds, which is the default. I just changed it to 128, so I just multiplied it by two. Um, if I notice any more issues, I would again go up. Uh, I always do it in sets of two. So if I went from 64 to 128, the next one I would do is 256, and then it maxes out at 512. I've never had to go above 128 on LACA 3.4 though. Uh, polling behavior. Um, I'm not sure about this. I tried to change this to normal and for some reason none of my inputs would work anymore. So I'm just going to leave it at late. I don't notice any issues with it personally. Um, when I compare this to my PC, obviously there's a little bit of a, of a difference because everything runs much better on my PC, but that's uh, besides the point. And then, yeah, you want to make sure all these are set the way they are here. Audio, you want also thread, make sure it's turned on. Resampler, I changed this to the lowest. I think the default is lower. Lower is probably fine. The audio, you're not going to really notice any difference with that, to be honest. There's not, I don't notice any difference with the audio quality. The output rate, though, it was set to 48,000. Actually, no, I'm not sure what the default is, but whatever the default is, I've personally found the best for me with this Raspberry Pi build is 44.1. So that's what you want to set there. And you want synchronization to be on. You don't want your audio to be uh, playing ahead or behind what you're seeing on screen, which also comes back to the latency, but 128 milliseconds versus 64, you probably aren't going to notice that anyway. And menu sounds, I just have all that turned off. I find when I turn the OK and cancel sound on, um, I also had to enable the mixer, and doing all that makes the menu laggy a bit. It doesn't affect the games, but I'd rather have the menu be snappy than laggy. I don't need to hear audio feedback because I can see it visually. And these are what I just have for the drivers in here. Uh, the menu, some people may not like ozone. There's tons of, to choose from. When you choose ozone, you can also change the appearance, like the colors and things like that. These ones have different settings as well, like the XMB or cross media bar. That one's going to look similar to a PlayStation 4 or 5 or 3, I guess. Um, so if you like that look, you can just change it. You can also enable kiosk mode either in, can, not in configuration. Um, it's either an on-screen display or user interface. You can enable, ah, here we go, kiosk mode. And that essentially will hide a lot of the settings. So if you have it the way you like and you want other people to be using the device, you probably want to enable kiosk mode so that they don't mess around with your settings. Because once you have everything set the exact way you want, it might be a little annoying. And whenever you do some changes, however minor, before you even test it, as long as this menu is still running fine, I always go in here and I do both, new and current. And if anything ever gets overwritten or you accidentally load configuration or reset to defaults because it doesn't give you a prompt as soon as you go into this or this it'll just fucking do it and then you're done um, at least when you do this way with the new configuration you're always going to have those backup log files that you can go back to and then you're good to go um, so i don't have too many games on here right now as i was testing i'm actually gonna after this video um, upload a whole bunch more N64 titles. I was initially going to put the entire ROM set on here, but then you're stuck going through like dozens of games that you don't even want to touch. So I'm going to have to pick and choose what are the best games. Um, just to show you quickly a game when you have it loaded up though. Like I had an issue on LACA 3.3 with Star Fox at the beginning. So as soon as you go in here, um, if you have any core issues, like you're not sure what it's associated with, information should tell you. Right here, core, it's not it's set to MuPen64. You don't want to use parallel. That one will not run as well. 
and then you go in here and we should be good <clears throat> yeah you may find when you boot up a n64 game the beginning intro scenes and boot up animations may run a little janky but just ignore that it'll once you're in the game it's going to run smooth um even this is smoother than it was on on just 3.3 which is crazy and the other part that was slow in Star Fox on 3.3 was the text Fourth reading. The, the text reading system. was always horrible, evil and now it's perfect. This one. You can hear some audio crackling there, but this is one of the only times I noticed this. I just had to find the right key because I'm using my keyboard. That's it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we were getting some FPS drops here, but that happens at the beginning of the game. And now we're back it's up. It's about time you showed up, Fox. Yeah. You're the only hope for our world. I'll do my best. Andros won't have his way with me. But yeah, it's crazy that lack of 3.3 and then going to lack of 3.4. Now everything is smooth as butter. Even this intro animation to this mission used to go slow until you started flying and manually controlling your ships, but now everything's perfect. Fox and his, and his crew of ambiguous um, people are good to go. Get your heat diffuser system. Yeah, and that's pretty much that. And um, your options for the MuPen 64 core, you don't really need to change anything on LACA 3.4. They minimized all the options in here. Um, you used to have about twice as many that you could go in through from, and now it's just this. You pretty much don't want to change any of this. If yours doesn't look like this, then maybe take a second look at this and make sure it matches. And I guarantee you, if you're running uh, 2 gigahertz CPU, V3D frequency, 750 megahertz, and running at 1920 by 1080, this is going to run perfectly on the Raspberry Pi Model B, Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, 4 gigabyte. Uh, the RAM doesn't matter um, when you're going from 4 gigs to 8 gigs. If you're going to get the 2 gig model, you may experience some slowdown, but 4 gig of RAM and up, all you need for emulation up to the N64, you're good to go. And this, uh, just depending on how many controller packs, or how many controllers you have, you're good to go there. And yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs>